loved it. I'll send you a copy. Bam! Bitch went down. So you have Jake Gyllenhaal playing a bisexual man in a pretty major release for Netflix. Mm -hmm. But you literally have him have one scene with a man, which is completely non-sexual. Yeah. And then have him fucking a woman for the rest of this movie. He has yes. no male on male, like n- no actual like gayness. And I think that may be why his effeminacy hurts more. It's definitely is, frustrating. That's because, fun. yeah, because you don't see any scenes between him and a man. Even when he has his scene with his boyfriend, who has a wonderful black booty. It's gorgeous. <laughs> but, <laughs> but like, it, they don't interact at all. No. And no. that, that to me was my biggest like movie. You you had something you could have done interesting with this character by representing queerness, but you don't put anything queer in the movie other than, oh, he's just femme. Yep. And this literally feels like the Gilroys saying, okay, not only are we going to be progressive and edgy and inclusive, but it's very much true to form for the art world where... You know, we've got this bisexual guy and his voice is really important. But also, let's not scare people by having him touch a man. But that's the thing. It's on Netflix. What does it matter? Box office doesn't even matter. You've got all these people in this movie that they get, quote unquote, for free by signing up for Netflix. Mm -hmm. You're not going to scare them away. No. And we know that Jake is down to do it because he's in a fucking Oscar nominated film in which he got porked. Yes, Exactly. And so, yeah, it, it, it was, I'm not going to use the word offensive because, again, I didn't feel strongly enough about this movie to be offended by it, but it's just a big missed opportunity. Why do you, you have Absolutely. a platform and you just don't use it. I, I don't understand. And if you didn't want to take the character there, then why did you bother to make him bisexual? Because really, he he could have just had a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Or he could have had no partner at the beginning. Because honestly, we also don't need that stupid story about him ruining Josephina's life of her ex, who we don't even fucking meet. No, you're right. Well, and then, then, oh, crap. I I guess I'm I'm going more over to your dark side. Come to my dark side, Trace. (laughs) Because, (laughs) no, you're right. Because it serves, why not just make him straight? But no, you make him bisexual just so there's an excuse for him to be effeminate because... He's a bitchy male critic, which we'll get to the critis- the critiques on criticism in a minute, which, holy shit. Get in, losers. This is the Lady Killers, a feminine rage podcast. I'm Jen. I'm Sammy. I'm Rocco. And I'm May. Our podcast is a tribute to the female-identifying killers in horror and more. Each episode will feature us, your Supreme Court of female murderers, discussing our favorite lady killers, from your Julias and Jennifers to your Carries and Christines. We'll tell her story, decide if it's good for her horror, and answer the most important question of all. Would we die for her? Join us on Thursdays as we pull on our sweaters, snatch our ice picks, sharpen our scissors, and honor the lady killers who live on the silver screen. No boys were harmed in the making of this podcast. Yet. (laughs) (laughs) It was late in the afternoon when the professor and I took our way towards the east, whence I knew Jonathan was coming. Jonathan Harker has asked me to note this, as he says he is hardly equal to the task, and he wants an exact record kept. Dear Madam Mina, I have read your husband's so wonderful diary. Strange and terrible as it is, it is true. I will pledge my life on it. God preserve my sanity, for to this I am reduced. Safety and the assurance of safety are... Things of the past. I am in hopes that I shall see more of you at Castle Dracula. <laughs> listen to Regarding Dracula wherever you listen to podcasts, or find us online at bloody.fm. <laughs>